Hey, welcome back. This is Miles Ways again. Today we actually have a request coming from Will. He wanted us to make strawberry shortcakes, so I prepared strawberry shortcakes for us today. So, you know, strawberry shortcakes, you need strawberries. I pre-cut some strawberries. Let me show you how I want to cut them. So you're going to take your strawberries. You will usually wash the whole thing, but I pre-cut them. So I'm just wash this one. And then while I'm washing that one, I'll wash my hands. How we cut the strawberries, you want to cut the top off. When people cut the top off of the strawberries usually, they cut too far in and cut that much. You want to go as close to the green you can and just smoothly run down so you have that much wasted because you can still use that strawberry if you wanted to. You can just slightly slice that. You can use that strawberry little thing. You can just cut them in half. But for the recipe, we're going to quarter them. Just cut them in half down the center. Hold the two sides if that's too hard. You can separate them and just slice them right down the center again. And you want to dip these in strawberries. I mean, in strawberries, hot, and sugar. And that's what I have right here the pre cut ones. I let this go for about 30 minutes already. So that's why you see the nice little juices flowing out of there. And if you actually look closely at it, the cinnamon, cinnamon sugar mix, you know, add a little spice to your life. Why not? So, we are done with this now. Let me wash my hands since I touched the garbage can. Pre-measured ingredients today. Put this back over here. Use a large bowl or a medium-sized bowl because we have to sift stuff into it. And sift means just to bring together as one so everything's in there evenly. Because if you try to mix it, you might have like a big clump of salt here, big clump of salt sugar here. So we're just gonna sift it just to make sure everything's even. So we're gonna take everything. This is our two cups of flour. I use powdered sugar because it's more sweeter than regular granulated sugar. So it calls for five cups of granulated sugar. So I cut that in half because powdered sugar is more sweeter to two and a half teaspoons. I said five cups. I meant two teaspoons. I mean five teaspoons. Yeah. Five teaspoons of regular sugar to two and a half teaspoons of powdered sugar. Then we have our baking soda and baking powder. It called for one fourth cup each. I mixed them together already with our one eighth of a tablespoon of salt in here already. everything. So we're just going to sit it in here and put it all right here in this little sifter or you can use a strainer if you don't have a sifter. And basically sifting, you put it together and you just tap. You know how like they do the little funnel cakes? You see the little dust? Uh oh, it's coming out the side. See the little dust in there? Just want to keep it round and round, round to town, round to town. Make sure everything gets in. And you want to do this for imperfections. Because sometimes I found flour that had like small chunks of salt in it when I was just using it in the bake shop and stuff. So, you know, if your flour and your sugar are stored like close to the same spot, you might want to do this because you never know what you'll find in your flour. Yeah, and you see those clumps in there? Right there? We don't want those clumps. That was the clumps from the baking soda and baking powder. So we're just going to move this to the side. And we have one and a half cups 
of water. You pour this in and mix it till it comes nice and smooth to our already pre-made dough ball. You see the dough, when I press into it, it has a quite small spring bracket because you don't want this dough to be extremely tight because if you have too tight of a dough and overwork it, you're going to have too rough of a biscuit. We want these to be nice and soft when we have these. Like, watch, I'll open mix it. Because when you mix them, you'll have it, you have it in your bowl, press down and fold over. Press down, out, fold back over. Press down, fold the side over. Press down, I'll do it on the countertop so you can see better. You want to dust, you know, countertop. So it's not sticky when you do this in the dough. Move around so it have room to work. You want to press down and around. Down, you see whatever side sticking out the most, just fold him back, press him down. Fold him back and press him down. That's all you got to do. And see how I'm working this dough? And you see how much pressure I'm starting to apply to it? Because you can see how much I'm pushing it up. That's showing how much pressure it's taken for me to put the dough together. So I'm going to work this for a moment. You want to work the dough and support the right dough. You want to work it for about three to five minutes. But if you want to over tough it just for like play and see how much and see how good it tastes like, do it for about like seven minutes and you'll see the difference. Now, when you look at this, you see how that springs really firm back at me? I don't want that. When I bake this biscuit, it's going to be really hard and chewy and like brittle-ish. Like you don't want really chewy brittle dough. Because it won't make for a good dough because I overstretch the glutens in the dough. Glutens is basically what the flour is called. There's glutens and flours and I overstretch them because in the glutens they go like this and then coming back. This and coming back. This and coming back. Every time I did the fold over and push out, that's what the glutens is doing in here. Just working. You're just overworking them. It's like what they used to do with the slaves back in the day. Just overwork them. Overwork the slaves. It's like, whoosh, yes, massa, work me to the death. That's why we had the revolution and all that other stuff. You know, so the slaves can get free and they was happy because they wasn't being overworked no more. That's how glutens is. It's like gluten slaves in here. You don't want to overwork them. You want to make, you want to have happy glutens. Not bad ones, not bad ones either. So we'll have that dough. And you want to sit here. Actually, after you let it rest for about 15 minutes, just push them out. He'll rise. Push them out. We cut them to half. I just cut them in half for about the size of the biscuit you want. When you roll, you roll off the edge of your fingertips. So you watch, roll on thumb, roll on thumb, roll on thumb. And when you get really good, it should feel like you're playing with a little squishy ball so you can get the dough to round out. But when you're doing it at first, slow it down. Just roll off all your fingertips, come back out, roll off all your fingertips and go out. Because I'm not the best baker by any far chance. I messed up everything about 20 times before I get anything right. And once you see like this little knot side right there, just push them and pull everything back. So you have a nice round ball and then roll them. And after you roll them, you know, he should be like a bigger biscuit. You should have like a bigger cut. For this one, I'm gonna show you how big. I'm gonna flatten him out, but you wouldn't flatten yours out really. She have about like that wrong because it'll puff up. And she be a little, little thick. And we have some already made biscuits. Hot, fresh in the oven. I've been at work early. This is what your after product of having it in the oven for about 15, 20 minutes or until GBD, golden brown and delicious. That's what I like. And then you would take some butter, baste your butter on top, you know, just to add a little bit more flavor. That one flavor. And butter is your friend. So we're going to cut these in half, actually. Sweet. I'm going to rinse this knife off, you know. It never hurts. And 
you're doing this at home, make sure you use a bread knife. This knife is called bread knife or like a serrated knife. Look at the little bumps on the side of it. Look at them. See? Nice little bumps. You want this for your breads. Because the other knife, I'll show you. I'll cut one with the right knife and one with the wrong knife, and I'll show you what your bread looks like. This is your bread knife. Even though they're bumps, they're very still sharp edges. Please, because you can cut yourself. I've done it. It's not a good feeling. You just want to work like a saw. Go back and forth. Back and forth. Handle. Hold the handle. Go back and forth. Go back and forth. Once I get to the middle, cut them straight down. One clean slice. And you want to throw these little excess crumbs back. I'll put him down right here. A slotted spoon here so I don't get all the juices on them. Get the strawberries, strain them out. You want to have a nice healthy chunk on them. You know, we'll throw a little couple extra, you know, drizzle down to make it look like you got a couple more effect and it always looks nice. And I will want some of this juice on it to soak up in the bread to make it softer. Just drizzle them on, drizzle a little bit on top. So the top part has a little bit of love and tender care. Then you will add your whipped cream to it. You can also have ice cream, but ice cream is more optional because classical um, shortbreads, they just have whipped cream. I'm being a cheater by using canned whipped cream because I didn't want to hand make whipped cream. Just something nice. Start from the outside and pipe in. Because you can cover all your mistakes when you do it that way. And just have him lean him on the side like that. And there you go. Strawberry shortcake delights. All in its wonders. Thank you again. It's been another episode of Mindless Ways. You know, keep showing me love on the Facebook. Go follow me on Twitter at, at TN Smith. T E capital A N N last name Smith. Show me some love, like the fan page, and send me some requests. You know, your word is really good to me. I like to do stuff like this instead of do daily schedule things. It's a little interest in my day. So peace, love, happiness. Thank you. Please come back.